as you might know from the video title, this week we'll be sailing down to East London. But there's a couple of stuff that we got to finish before we uh, go down there. And uh, one of them is our, our speed hasn't been working for our last couple of trips. So apparently you can take this thing out in the water and uh, not sink the boat if you're quick with your hands. I'm not quick with my hands. So uh, let's check it out before we get onto the last of the couple of stuff before we can go down to East London in less than 24 hours. Okay, first let's take off this little thing here. Let me get calm rocks. Yeah, this thing is flamscat. Yeah, the bunk. New. Hopefully we don't need the bunk. Uh, I'm expecting that the water is about this level. So I'm expecting it about this level. But if I have my hand like that, keep it like that, it should only implode to the side. Hopefully not get all the furniture wet. This is, is a bluff after all. Maybe I'll take this off as well, just in case. Yeah, this thing is fucking scarp. Scarp, scarp, scarp. Ready, set, go. Hey man, that's fucking... <laughs> Not a lot Good of water. Good sticks, huh? Good huh? sticks. See what's growing on there, Tommy? Mm, looks like literal shit. <laughs> and it smells the same. Fuck it doesn't hell. smell bad. Hmm? Mm, no, it smells. You I think I'll need a lap for this. Please get me a lap. Okay, switch it off there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is that growth or is it mud? How can there be mud there? It must be growth. I think you must paint this a little bit of anti huh? Look at that, that's hard, huh? That's hard uh, growth. Yeah. It's like a shell. You need a knife or something. No, it's not that hard. That wouldn't have been very difficult if you'd gone underneath to do that. Get all that stuff out. Yeah, I would have just flicked it. It probably would have worked. But not very long, I suppose. Mm. I was a bit afraid of letting the water into the boat. So now I've done that. Luckily, I've got cat-like reflexes. And a coastal skipper sticker. Oh, coastal <laughs> sticker. Well done, Tommy, with your coastal skipper sticker there. Eh? Makes me qualified to do this kind of things. Yeah, so now we're legal going down to East London. How's that for timing, huh? Mm -hmm. Getting your coastal skippers the day before we go. 17, 17, 18 hours before we leave. Well, now you can see it's. Ooh, get the light right. You can see it's clean enough. Should be working now. Time to put it back in again. Okay, see if I can get it in as quick as I got it out. Okay, ready. <laughs> slipped. It's slower than the second time. Yeah, it slipped out of my hand. It's got to locate. It's got to locate. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I think the smell was the more water more than the barnacles. Done and dusted. Yeah. Now just the bolts to clean. Dub's not it. How's it? You wondering what I'm doing? A bit of. Arts and crafts. Let me show you outside quickly. A couple of weeks ago, we bought 200 meters worth of rope uh, to use for our anchor. And after hearing some concerns from the oaks and talking to some people, we realized that it's probably a better idea to get some chain. So I went out and got myself 60 meters of hot tip galvanized chain for the boat. We only have about 10 meters of chain on this winch at the moment connected to the anchor which is uh, the minimum requirement it being the only thing keeping your boat in place while you're out at sea makes it uh, quite a good investment I think to get a proper uh, anchor and chain So I'm gonna lay out the chain and mark it accordingly every 5 meters uh, instead of just putting it in and, and guesstimating how much chain I've dropped Well, this is going to be fun. I've only got a three meter tape measure and I want to make marks every five meters. So, if I can show you my badly designed idea here, every five meters I'll do one green, two green, three green, 
and then a solid green for 20 and then I'll start with yellow one two three and a solid then red one two three and then a big solid piece again red for stop stop chains nice and clean as you can see as well Then it will paint it. Now I just gotta wait for it to dry a little bit, then flip it and paint it on the other side. I said flip it man. And that's it, we're done. It's all, all painted, ready to go back on the winch. While it was off, I also took the liberty of cleaning the winch a little bit as it got stuck sometimes. Now it opens quite easily. So uh, should be all good. Time for to put the chain back and then we ready to go. Everything on the boat was now ready for the wild coast and the only thing not ready was uh, the weather and we had to spend a couple of days, maybe weeks, I can't remember that well, waiting for the weather. In this time I uh, took a day or two to build some lead cloths from some extra material we had laying around. Eventually we found a three-day weather window uh, to go to East London. Problem is at the end of this weather window there was 40 knots of winds gusting more that uh, we wanted to avoid so we decided to leave a day or two early so we could make some decent headway and hopefully arrive in East London before the worst of the wind hit. We only found out later that there was actually a weather warning, severe weather warning out for, uh, for the days we spent at sea but it uh, wasn't too bad. We made it into East London just before the worst of it hit. And we're off at 11 o'clock to uh, East London. The boat looks a flipper mess. Mm. We've got to try and stow the last stuff, get everything ready. Running around, I think we better start doing some things, hey? Kosher, kosher, kosher. Very, very kosher. Huh? Cheers, bro! <laughs> bye bye, bye bye. <laughs> It's gonna be a long ride beating into the wind. Lee cloths on. Moss ready to pull up by one person. Struggling with the sliders, no problem anymore. This will be the last trip out of Durban Harbour forever. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Let's see if we can get 
get this man up with me. Like a rainy night outside. Nobody at the bar on a Friday. What's happening? Oh no, it's a Wednesday. Yeah. I guess every day is Friday if you're retired now. <laughs> Destiny in front there. As soon as we get past the breakwaters, we'll make a sharp turn right and go as deep as possible. As fast as possible. Nothing better, right? 
I spent some time at the back there feeding the fishes, but now I feel better. So, so. You, just, you see, it looks awful down there. That's that rain we just had. Lovely sunshine waiting for us somewhere over there. Survived the night, looks like a mess. All our tomatoes fell out. Look at that oven, you know, we've got a bumpy sea. The sea is rough, rough and tough and wet. See all the wet, wet gear lying on the floor. All the wet stuff and try to get up. And that bad boy over there. He's following us. Look at that thing. He wants to eat us alive. And but luckily we've got some dolphins here. A shoal of dolphins. I'm honestly had better nights in my life. Yeah. A lot better nights. In holiday in hotels. Yeah. Battling a bit with a rough sea with a wind vane to get it running, operating. We did operate it last night for a while, but as soon as the wind starts getting strong, then it uh, 
I think we've got another paddle. I think maybe the other paddle is for the stronger winds. The bigger paddle. Yeah, but the smaller, no, it's a shorter but fatter panel where this is a longer panel. I don't know that that is maybe for the storm cells. And then note Tommy's uh, second hand foul weather gear that he bought from the from the second hand coach shops and my old flight suit for the microlite, which is definitely not waterproof. And some warm waterproof socks. <laughs> Finally got this hunk of junk working. Now we can relax a little bit. Flip it now. It was a long night. We're dying down a little bit, it's also turning in the right direction. See we're heading towards our purple line. Maybe you can see, maybe you can. Got a little bit of current, but not the four knots we're looking for just. As you saw, the leak loss also took quite a beating that one's on as well now. So running the motor to make up some speed on the upwind part. So it turns into more. things broke during the night so uh, let's quickly uh, go have a look at fixing them I got a shackle and some rope and that should be enough to, for the job you see this rope is stuck so we can't get out to Genoa hey this is gonna be a wet affair I can see it First I gotta pull it in. Which should lead to a bit too bad. Uh. Okay, there's that duck. Now the shackle has to go to that little hole there. What this nice and warm. Good, good. What a hoot.
Uh, the mate is going to come down next, but I don't know if I've got enough battery to show that and then we'll just sail the final stretch of the Genoa, about 100 nautical miles. A little Richard's bait trip, if you will. Our captain's having a bit of a rest after his night shift. It looks like a bomb implo implo exploded, yeah? Outside. Wind vane is working like a boss. This is the problem with the cleating in the front. We've got to sort that out. But once it's cleated and, and the lines are tight, it works well with that small paddle on the top there. So we've only been running for about an three quarters of an hour, so let's give it a bit of time and see what happens. Running course of uh, between 300 and 270 should be 10 hours to East London. Point three nautical miles left, so 4.7 knots, but we're doing about 8 average, so another 30 minutes or so. There you can see East London, and just in time for beer o'clock, you see the sun's about to set. I'm sure the bar's already open, Friday waiting for us. Special, hope you've got a happy hour. Mm, special. Looks like this is East London now, going into the, the harbor, yeah. The harbor in the front, yeah. Yeah. You can barely see the, the lights. This is a breakwater, yeah? Southern breakwater. The are coming right into the harbor, so I think if we go around that green point there, it should be better, eh, Tommy? That's our episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We 
enjoyed the Wild Coast. It was a hell of a time. And uh, we'll see you again in a week or two with our next trip, which is from East London to Eisenach. Thanks for watching this far. A special thanks to our patrons, and we'll see you all again next week. Ciao.